Bear Down Bears fans, another edition of the Chicago Bears podcast coming your way. Combine week is here, so we got to get some combine stories out of our own Lance Briggs and talk about the importance of this day, I guess. Also, looking into the cap increase that the Bears have, there's a little, uh, we can add a few more players than we thought here, Lance. There's nothing wrong with having more money so we got to get into all that of course having some fun on this pod there was there was some wild stuff this weekend dog i mean justin fields is a coward uh the, the, cam newton's throwing haymakers kd's getting called out his name we got to get into everything on this pod <laughs> hit that like button subscribe to the page leave that five star review y'all know what to do lance what's going on my guy how you been what's up pat oh man i'm good i'm good uh it's a, it's a it's not, you know, it's not a wild world, but it's a, it's a, it's a wild world when, when, when you allow the devil's playground Ooh. to have fun in your head. That's what's happening a lot right now. A lot of speculation. A lot of people say this. A lot of people say that, and none of it, none of it, is based off factual information. My favorite thing is we live in a world where Justin Fields unfollowing the Bears causes pandemonium. But for some reason, Matt Eberflus growing out a beard makes me feel more confident that the Bears are going to start winning more. I think that that has a bigger role in the Bears' success than, <laughs> than Justin Fields unfollowing the Bears. That, now that. I believe is based in facts. <laughs> I mean, dog, look at this. This this is this was me on Twitter. I the right on the right. I believe we're on the right path. On the left, y'all know how we get down. Stop playing with us. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. Yeah. Like you <laughs> I love that. I love no, that. I'm just saying, like the, he showed up with the beard and the taper fade. Now it's like he finally stopped going to never mind. I was gonna say a brand on here. They might sponsor one day. We're not gonna throw them out. There. True. That's true. <laughs> But it looked like a very, it looked like a cut that was very super now. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down there, Lance. Calm down. We need money on this show. <laughs> hey, let's jump into all the, well, I mean, listen, you missed a week and, and you brought it up about the Devil's Playhouse. Let's start there. We'll get into the combine talk and all that, but, but let's start there. What were your thoughts when you saw everything that happened with Justin Fields unfollowing the Bears, Justin Fields unfollowing the NFL, me and EO were on Friday, and I talked about how that actually does make a difference because people now how the algorithms are set up, people you follow, you get videos from them. That's why I had to unfollow a lot of my dirtbag friends who follow some wild stuff out there, right? It's 9 a.m. I don't need to see that in the morning. But what were your thoughts when you saw uh, the Justin Fields unfollow and the reaction to it well when it when i saw that 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 um he unfollowed i was it piqued my interest to see how people were going to respond to this you know if there were if people were going to say oh he unfollowed because that means you know because in the in the in the culture of of social media when a a a girl and a guy are dating and one unfollows the other, it is a clear sign that it is a breakup, okay? Um, so, or or it's a sign that, that they're on the way down, okay? So that in turn, when people see Justin Fields unfollow the Bears is a red flag for a breakup of relationships, okay? So I, that's what I wanted to see, but, the, but in the reality, that's not the, what the fact is. You know, the fact, Really is, you know, if you were a guy that uh, that a popular polarizing figure in your city or state or whatever in your profession, and <clears throat> you are attached to the Bears, you know, or whatever the biggest org that that people people like to follow, you're going to get uh, uh, you're going to get a bunch of messages through them every morning, just like you said, you get some wild messages, stuff you wake up at nine a.m. You're going to wake up at all hours of the day seeing stuff that's said about you, whether it's good, whether it's bad. Um, I mean, after a year of being the, the, the most talked about figure, you know, and listening to people say, we got to get rid of them. We got to keep them, you know, get rid of them. You know what I mean? Like, again, that, that's some, that's, it's still your life. You know what I mean? It's your life that everybody is making these comments on <clears throat> and whether it's warranted or not, at some point, don't you get tired of it? Wouldn't you want to, like, it's season's over, season's over, and I know we're still the most talked about 
issue in the NFL, but I I personally I don't have any control over over what happens at this point now. What I had control of was during the football season. Now I don't have control of this. Now it's up to the Bears. So me just listening to everybody comment on whether I need to be gone, go this place, or I need to stay, like is that is that really my business? What what I've seen what it feels like to me is the same pushback that people have given Draymond Green, the same pushback that people have given Paul George, the same pushback that people have given Kevin Durant. The the former media doesn't like when new media, which is a lot of times younger players, players that are on the field. Michael Parsons has a podcast now, right? Justin Fields going on a pocket. They don't like it when the player gets to control what his narrative is. They like the stories. They like being able to spin it. They like being able to talk. They like being able to add a story in and, and create the, like you said, in the devil's mind, right? Like what you're putting into, right? The spin, the spin that I could put on the story. You can't put a spin on the story where Justin Fields just goes, man, I just got tired of seeing it. Right. <laughs> and now the spin is just like, wait, he said that personally? It's coming straight from his mouth? Well, now we just got to spin something out there. And that's what it kind of turned into. Well, what's the underlying mean? And I think what's interesting, let me ask you this, as a player, because a lot of times in the NFL, when we hear people talk, the conversation is usually, well, of course he's not going to say what he really feels. He knows what happens if he does that. And so we can't take his words at face value. How often do you think you gave like the politician speech or the this is for the team rah-rah speech versus, no, this is really how I feel and y'all should just take me at the words I'm saying? Hmm. I, uh... I don't know. I, I'd say I'd say majority of the time, um, I I was able to articulate what I wanted to say, and be able to satisfy it in a in a in a satisfy my answer in a in a, a pseudo kind of political and still get my point across. You know, I'm. Um, it wasn't a a. I didn't answer it in a in a way that everybody answers the, that same question, you know, Hey, why did you tackles, you know, or why, you know, or, or, <clears throat> or, or talking about another one of the teammates, you know, in, in that had the glaring issues during that game. Um, I'll bring the, I'll bring the, the attention back to myself and plays that I could have done better and, and highlight a play that a tackle that I miss in comparison to the guy that they were trying to, to call out during that, that interview. So, you know, I, like I said, and this didn't happen my, my, my rookie year, you know, this is something that I learned how to do, you know, as I got older and everybody doesn't have those skills right out the gates, you know, you have to learn that. And you, and, and, and one of the best ways to learn it is in a, in a media market like Chicago, you know, where you're getting cornered, you left and right. And everybody's asking you all these questions, you know, but, but uh, um, it, it, it certainly is a skill. Uh, and I think it's also a skill that, that Justin Fields has. Um, he has a great grip on. He's yeah. the leadership skills kind of ooze from his uh, interviews. You can see that. So you do think that there is kind of like, do, well, I, I'll ask you this. From what you heard from the EQ podcast, from the unfollowing, all that, do you think that there's an underlying meaning here? Do you think that this, see, I said, I said this when Justin Fields brought up the girl aspect, I was like, oh, so like, you mean like when, Young people will like just unfollow a girl just to get their attention and let them know that they unfollowing them. Be like, hey, I'm still over here. Y'all ain't looking at me. I'm still over here. I mean, like, do, do you, how much do you think we can take Justin Fields at what he said in that interview at face value? I mean, it's uh, at this moment. I don't. There's there's too much of the the public, you know, that want to speculate. They yeah. want in some story. So anything that he says is it's 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 going to take a, a a huge chunk of the population that are not going to take it at, at face value you know they just just they want to be able to talk i mean i you know in my house at 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 on the practice fields people want to talk about it they want to get your spin oh can you believe that he unfollowed can you believe you know <clears throat> 
like unfollowing is 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 uh is is like the almighty uh uh um breakup like it's you know it's the biggest thing that's happening oh man he unfollowed can you believe that you know <laughs> like son i could unfollow you today all right that doesn't mean that i might follow you again tomorrow you know now if i unfollowed you if i tell my son if i unfollowed you today you think i stopped love i don't love you anymore no dad but that's you you know what i mean no that's you dad you know all right well you know anybody can unfollow anybody it doesn't doesn't have to mean that it's over yeah, that's that's the that's the the part that I looked at where I was like, so he unfollowed the Bears. Okay, um, so what happens if the Bears decide to keep him and he doesn't follow them uh, back? What? <laughs> you know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, like what what happens if he's literally just like, I just want to not have that on my timeline. And it, it's so weird because it's such a polarizing player in Justin Fields, but realistically, when you look at the 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 social media aspect of it for so many people this is real life this is the only thing that matters this is and in real life if the bears say we're going to keep Justin Fields the social media stuff has nothing to do with it Let, you got to like you know how wild you got to be on social media for somebody to be like we're done with you <laughs> it, it it would have to have been something that was consistent over the last over the last three years of his career where it was, you know, his social media has been an issue for him, you know, and, and that's, it's not the case, yeah. you know, his, his character is not in question. It's never I happened. don't even believe that he posts on it. <laughs> right. I, look, I look at his Instagram and I'm like, add, 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 maybe, maybe him here. He's in the pool and right. there's a dog in the picture. Maybe that's him. Add. <laughs> right. 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 It's all about business at the end of the day. Business is business. Stand on it. That's what I say. Um, let me ask you this, Lance, because that that was that was that turned into a nightmare in itself. But I think now here is where so many talk about spinning stories. So many stories are going to be spun as we have the combine coming up. Um, and I guess just speak to us how important do you feel the combine realistically is for the guys that are going to be doing things? Because now the trend has started where the top quarterbacks aren't throwing. I don't have anything to prove. You got my college tape. You know who I am. I'll throw it my pro day. Um, they're not risking their bodies nearly as much. You're seeing less people run the 40 time each year. Like is the combine still as important as it once was? Uh, yeah, I think it's important. Uh, I think it's important, but I think it, it just, uh, it's, it's how you, how you, how you look at it, you know, um, it, it, there's parts of it that I really dislike, you know, the poking, the prodding, you know, feeling like a piece of meat, you know, that part of it. Um, but I do think that it's necessary to get some of these players that you're going to invest in to get a uh, 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 to get a closer view and 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 an opportunity to see them in a different light, you know, have conversations with them, uh, talk about terminologies, concepts, you know, how do you understand this? How do you understand that? You know, the <clears throat> I, you know, was never a fan of you know the the Wonderlick test or some of these these four hour tests that they put you through. I think that's ridiculous. Uh, I don't know if they still. I don't know. I don't know if they still do the four-hour tests. I know Seattle and New York. Yeah, it. they do. I think. Uh, I think Justin had to take it when he got in, and he was like one of the highest scores of the test in general. So, yeah, um, you know, but the 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 getting in front of the coaching staff and and um, even for some of the ones that for me, I I felt it was a it wasn't a great experience going in with some of these, uh, these, these teams, you know, I, I went in with the, with the Cleveland Browns and um, shoot, I'm trying to think of who they had at the time. Um, he would, he had just come from Miami. Um, the GM there, the coach, the coach had just come from Miami. And then he, oh, um, uh, he, he was one of the guys in the middle of like, we're firing a coach every other week. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and man, I can't think of his name right now, but you, getting into, as soon as I walked in, it was, it was just high stress, 
just intense, you know, and them asking me questions about this, like, why would you do this? Why would you do that? And it was, it felt like it was a dark room with a spotlight on my face and you could just hear the voices coming out. Well, what, what, what did you do this for? Well, why did you do this? Why did you like, what is going on? Yeah. You know? And I remember leaving, leaving the, 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 uh, the meeting and one of the last things that that was said to me about, you know, it was about being a leader. And and I said, well, I think I'm a leader, you know, and it was, well, are you even worth the shit? You know, it was one of those kind of, kind of you know, God, dang. I'm like, well, I mean, and I, I remember leaving that meeting like, well, that went, that went well. <laughs> was that Cornell? Romeo Cornell? Uh, Cornell. Uh, Before him? Uh, I think. Butch Davis. Butch Davis. It's Butch Davis. Butch Davis. Butch, Butch Davis, Davis was going hard on you. That whole, you know, that was their their deal, you know. And then next, the next was uh, Kansas City, and at that time they had Dick Vermeil. And so when I walked in, like I'm now, I'm ready. Now I'm like I'm ready for whatever you have to throw at me. I'm ready. So when I walk in, they Dick he he says sit down. He was like, where were you at before? Where'd you come before this? I said, Cleveland. He said, all right, relax. He was like, relax. He was like, this is going to be nothing like what you just went through. <laughs> so and they I, just knew. They knew. Um, <laughs> they knew. They knew. They knew what was going on. You know, and of course, when I when I, um, when I was with the Bears and then um, uh, uh, Nathan Vasher, he's like, man, I went through the Cleveland deal, too. They, they, they attacked me, too. And I was like, okay, that's, that's, that's just their thing. That's the way they were doing it at that time. So... So, so it's just, that's so crazy. That's why Butch was only what was he there two years? Wasn't it? Oh, short. It was pretty short. But you listen, to each their own. That's how they. You know, some of them. You know, they they get a kick out of that stuff. You know, and and but whatever. It's, it, but it's again, it's a way to get get up and close and personal and talk with somebody. Yeah, I was able to talk with Ron Rivera while I was there, and and uh uh mike singletary you know and these guys and no matter what they thought of you or think of you those are conversations that that you know when you run into them in a year or two once you're on a team you know with me and ron had a conversation you know when i when when he came to the bears about that meeting and the things that i said and how he felt you know he took it versus how uh another coach took what i said you know and so yeah. it's all perspective so one, you know, in, in his mind, he thought what I said had conviction and he understood. The other coach thought that, you know, that that I was I was a, I was a knucklehead, you know, and I took the knucklehead route, you know. And so it's, you know, some guy, I, I think some for some, some are they're they're set in how they feel about you, you know, and you're not going to change the way that they feel, you know, in the words they say. and others, you know, they get another light and they say, OK, this is. Okay, now I, I understand your stance and why you did what you did. So, <clears throat> so yeah, the the combine has it certainly has a place. It certainly has a place. But it's, it, your, your film, it doesn't to me. It doesn't. It doesn't override your film unless your character is glaring. Unless you have character issues. It's interesting because I, I almost feel like now more people focus in on the almost on the interview process a lot heavier than they do the actual measurables and things like that. And I think the player, the young players now know that. That's why you don't see as many people going to the combine, especially if you're a top pick. It's like, I'm a top pick regardless. What do you, you want to measure my 40 time? Look at me blow past that DB. That's, that's my 40 time, right? Like, are you, 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 you want to measure my 20 shuttle, right? Look at me pancake that guy over there. That's what you need to be focused on. And, it's almost like there's more power in the younger players here, but the the interview process, it, well, maybe it hasn't changed, I guess, even back then, right? Like, people came in in that interview process with their preconceived notions about you, and that's what they end up running with. Shout out to Cleveland for doing that. We appreciate that because we get Lance Briggs for, you know, his entire career. <laughs> yeah. not, a lot of, not a lot of good decisions made on that Cleveland team. I mean, oh, oh, one to oh, 3 <laughs> Right, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I just it, it's it's interesting to hear right like the the process that you went through because that's probably a reason why for so long we ended up missing out on some good players 
We ended up getting some good players when you had the right pieces in place at the coaching staff and stuff like that. We've gone through a rough stretch of coaches. Now it's about, right, like it, it almost feels like the Bears organization, the the front office has more of a hold on a lot of these meetings. And so I, me and EO talked about this. That interview process to me makes or breaks everything with this. Do we if if we feel that the Bears are going to take Caleb Williams, talent wise, he's a young talented player. He can play football. Can he play it at the NFL level? Is the question. And what kind of teammate? What kind of leader is he going to be? I think the interview process in this is more important than any numbers Caleb will go out there and put up. Yeah, yeah, will. But you got to also realize that he's coming from a. He'll be he'll be prepped and and primed for this. You know, this is this his agent um, and his his circle know how important this is for him because one yeah. of the big things for him is what you said. You know, can what kind of teammate is he? Can he lead? You know, um, I think for him there are probably more more questions off the field than there are on. Yeah. You know, and so the interview for him is very, it's very important. So uh, uh, that's something that I'm sure that he will be, get top-notch preparation prior to him sitting in front of any coach, team, or anybody come uh, calm down for the combine. Yeah, and, and I think that, you know, like when you, maybe that goes back to our Justin Fields conversation, right? Are a lot of these stories just stories that we've made up in our heads? Are a lot of these stories just stories that are being spun, the narrative that's being creative? Because let's be real, the biggest knock on Caleb Williams this season, minus the fumbles, a lot of fumbles, guys. There's a lot of fumbles with Caleb Williams this year. But minus the fumbles, the biggest knock is him crying in his mom's arm. Well, not winning the big games. Not no. winning big games as well. But, but he won some of those big games the year before. I mean, he listen. He won some. He has won some games. But the yeah. biggest question mark, though, for him is, and he consistently win the big games, and he did not. You know, that's one thing that he did not. Um, um, that, and this is on on the field. You know, uh, not yeah. throwing on time. You know, creating with his legs, which is very familiar with with uh, our current court, uh, Bears quarterback. <clears throat> so, you know, and then, and then outside of what on the field, you know, is that uh, is exactly what you're saying. The, You know, is he mentally tough? Is he mentally ready for the NFL game? Because yeah. you're, you're having if you're if you're not if you're not consistently winning the big games in college, when you play against the, the top teams who are more evenly matched, uh, um, uh, then you're going to get to the NFL and there you're going to be against a lot of evenly matched teams. You're going to be against the best that the, the uh, defensive players that the, the, the uh, U S has to offer. So now, you know, if you're not winning, how are you going to handle it? How, how is the, the, the most uh, commercialized, most taped, most videoed player on each team going yeah. to handle, you know, adversity and the lows, you know, and so it's it's one of those deals. And you, you look you look at uh, Bryce Young too. You say, okay, we had Bryce Young. Bryce Young he won a lot of those big games. He had Alabama's team, you know, personnel, but he won those games. You know, we uh, we trade away picks and we pick him up in Carolina, and we give away everybody or don't surround him with much talent at all, and he struggles. So most more than likely, Caleb's going to go to a team that struggled the previous year. That's obviously why they why they're getting the first pick. Right. So, so initially he's not going to be, or most likely he's not going to be surrounded by the best talent in the NFL. How is he going to manage and maneuver through through the mud before you get out of it or to get to help get his team out of it? Yeah. No, that that's that that's really what it comes down to and it makes it it always makes it interesting because it, it's almost as if the quarterback position is just viewed as, okay, you, you're a god. You you come here and you will fix everything. And it's like, well, the reason you're here is because you had a veteran quarterback the year before who probably could have navigated your system, but um, the the center died and you had no left tackle and you had no right tackle, and so he's running for his life every play. How's that change now? 
right? Like, how do you how do you change that out? And that's the conversation that the Bears are dealing with here with their future, right? In 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 all reality, if Caleb Williams were to come to the Bears, I would feel like he's got a little bit of a leg up coming here versus going to Washington, right? Where you know, it's it's question marks on the O-line all the way across. You got Terry McLaurin out there. So, yeah, he's got a receiver option. But, like, are, do you feel like there's a lot of offense going there? You look at the, the New England Patriots the same way. I think the Bears are a better position than where the teams behind them are. And that be, that comes from Ryan Poles doing great GMing, great trading, great planning, and getting the first overall pick another year in a row. And now you're sitting there asking yourself, okay, do you keep building the team or do you continue to go out there and feel like you're in a good enough place to add the quarterback? But with all that being said, the increase in the cap now does make that conversation a lot more interesting. Bears get a $30 million increase in the cap with the cap rising 30 million. They now sit at about 82 mil in the offseason. Mo money, Lance, mo money. Mm. Mm. Does this change your mindset at all on how you go about building the team? Because now, realistically speaking, if you were to draft the young quarterback, the new quarterback, you now have more money to put pieces around him that maybe you wouldn't have been able to do if you didn't have the money. You only draft him and you're like, we're rolling out there, same line, same receivers, all of that. Well, You add a couple young receivers in there as well, but still. Well, I mean, one thing it 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 uh, it helps the conversation of uh, re-signing Jalen Johnson, you know. Uh, oh yeah, that, I hope that certainly uh, helps with those negotiations. And I know that the, the I know that the Bears in the league they all knew that this day was coming anyway, you know. And so it, to me, you know, you wait till now and, and then you start negotiating uh, with Jalen uh, from a business standpoint. But yeah, I mean, you know, uh, there's it's hard to it's hard to to say, all right, this is what the Bears should do in the draft until we've seen what they do in free agency. Yeah. Free agency has to come first because we can we can say, you know, they should draft this player or that player. Then we see free agency and it's like, oh, well, they filled that need. Well, then, okay, that changes the board. So the reality is let's find out what happens in free agency and what the Bears do in free agency, and then that will dictate are how we we shape what they should probably do or what we think they'll do in the draft. Yeah, it, it, it's it's gonna be. I, I think there's so many names out there as well, right? You look money wise, right? And for the Bears' needs right now, you go if you want to fix your defensive line, you got a shot. <laughs> you, you got a real shot here, right? Justin Metabike out there. If he doesn't end up getting tagged, um, you know, you got Daniel Hunter out there. You got Chris Jones out there. You got and Chris, Chris Jones. You know, listen, he, I love, I hope they do bring him back in Kansas city. I love the fact that he's like, I ain't going nowhere. That's a big tag. That's a big, that's a big dollar sign on Chris Jones's name. So I'll be intrigued to see what Kansas city does knowing that they got to pay a wide receiver on the other side or draft. Well, they got to find somebody to catch the football because Kadarius Tony's on Instagram live right now. Uh, <laughs> see, that's what I'm worried about Instagram. When I got Kadarius Tony on Instagram, then I'm worried about the social medias. But if, if you could, of course, Jalen Johnson, he's taken care of. You've got, I'd probably say about 60, 62 million left somewhere in there to play with. Where are you focusing at money wise right now? Well, it's got to start in the trenches. You know, it's got to start in the trenches. So, you know, um, a center, you know, a center. Um, and I uh, shoot, I just saw somebody release one of their centers um, around the, around the league. But, you know, you look at a center, you know, you look at, 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 uh, at a potential defensive lineman, um, old lineman, uh, there's a potential, you know, there's, to me, those are the top, uh, the potential uh, wide receiver. You know, we're, you know, all of those things can, can reshape the way that, that you approach the draft, you know, <clears throat> and I do think there's some potential there for some top wide receivers, some tall yeah. ones, you know, and, um, and T Higgins and Mike Evans, you know, there's some, there's certainly some, some centers that uh, you can bring in that you know have proven themselves, that proven that they can play at a high level in the NFL. And there's certainly some top interior 
uh, um, pass rushers uh, that have proven that they can not only get to the highest level, but they can win Super Bowls because, you know, uh, not solely, but but mostly because of the pressure that they they they, they uh, provide. When you look at the center position, uh, I think that's the most important position. Where are you at on uh, draft versus veteran? Um, because the, the conversation to me has been Bears have an opportunity to go get a bunch of guys here. I think Jackson Powers is a guy that really stands out from Oregon. Um, where would you rather go if you go either way, Justin Fields or Caleb Williams? Would you rather go veteran center, experienced center, been in the NFL, or go with the young rookie that allows you to have the cash control, but that you feel is a first round level talent, almost a Darnell Wright situation? It, it depends on it depends on what we can get in this draft. It depends on on picks, placement, what kind of deal that we can make. Yeah. Uh, by trading back, uh, is which situation provides the 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 which situation provides the most uh, um, um, uh, positive situation for us? So so if I were to go. If there were uh, a, a top, I don't know, a top five center available in free agency, I can get him for uh, whatever, you know, he'll, he'll take, you know, 15, 15 mil off, off of this year's, um, um, off of this year's uh, uh, cap. Cap base, after this year's cap. And then I can go into the draft and I can focus on these other positions or I can get a receiver and I can get a center. Right. Oh, so now that changes. I don't have to worry about, you know, uh, getting Marvin Harrison Jr. or anything like that. I can focus on getting, you know, a top top that top tackle. You know, uh, I can trade back and get more picks, get into the second round. It's um, if I if maybe if I maybe if I don't get the dra- or the trade that I want in the draft, then maybe I do need to get the center, but I have to get the center in the second or third round. Right. There's there's a lot of dynamics here, and I'm sure that they it's like trying to break down a, uh, 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 like a federal crime and you have your, <laughs> you have your, your thumb the strings connected to this one and they're connected here and <laughs> different colored ones. And they're like, well, 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 you know, this could happen. You know, it's a, it, it's a fun, it's a fun, but it's, it's also kind of a crazy time where you're th- thinking, trying to think about every possible situation and how can we best put ourselves in a position to win. So <clears throat> I'm, I, it's it's not a like, it's not a, I'm not gonna say it's a problem that I wouldn't want to have. I think it's I think that's the fun part of what you're what you're doing. You know, what yeah. I mean, yes, your job is on the line, but at the same time, if this is if you do your job well, you know, what I mean, or shoot, if you do your job half decently, you'll be okay. You'll be okay. You know a, I mean? a good GM in the NFL is hitting at a like fifty two percent rate. <laughs> like traffic and signings it's like hey if you do just a little bit better than good you're great <laughs> right i mean i'm always going to say if i were if i were the the gm and i have my scouts and, and they're telling me about this player and why this player is so good you know i'm going to tell i the first thing i'm going to say is what do they look like on tape like what is who is this guy on tape yeah you know, um, I don't want to, don't tell me he's six, four, he's this, he's that he benches this. No, tell me about his tape. That's what I want you to tell me about first. All right. Tell me about his tape. Let's watch a few games together. And then we can say, okay, I see what you were saying, you know, or, uh, I don't know about this guy. You know, I don't know about this guy. You know, he, he doesn't look consistent at all, you know, and now you, the other questions arise. Okay. So how productive was he last year? You know, and then when did he get his first start? And let me see what he had from his first start to now. You know, like this is this yeah. is real. This is real stuff. You know, what I mean, oh man, but he he ran a forty in this time, and he did this. No, no, no. I want to know see how he developed from the first his first snap to his last snap. All right, I want to see if he's improved in his play, not his highlights. Everybody's got great highlights. I want to see how this guy plays football. Yeah, and that's that's what I think is interesting on both aspects is in the NFL, right? Like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but like, if you've got a premier center on the market, it probably means he's not a premier center because usually good centers don't end up getting let go by their teams. Very, very great point. 
Like, I, I would say right now, if you were going to go veteran center, you could go Evan Brown. But Evan Brown, solid guy, played in the Shane Waldron system out in Seattle. That's the guy I've kind of been eyeballing because I think that he's an affordable guy, a, a journeyman guy that can come in, give you a spot start while you got a young guy developing. And if you, you want to go there too. You have an inside voice in Waldron that can that could could vouch for him. Yes, yes. And 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 I think that the part that you've got that side of it where okay, solid guy, good guy, not great, but can get the job done. And then you have a guy like Connor Williams, who is available in free agency now, if he's going to get a deal done, who comes from Miami, who was having a phenomenal season, but he tore his ACL. And that's usually the two options where you see guys end up hitting the market it, it, where you got to take the chance on, OK, what's the stability? How's the knee? How's the future? How long is he going to be able to play on this? He's in a car crash every play or we got the guy that's kind of okay, but like we know we're going to have to replace him eventually. That's where I look at the the draft and maybe going with a young center as the better option just because you know, at least if you do your scouting right, you do all the process where you say from, from freshman to senior year, how did he improve? You at least feel confident in the fact that, okay, we got <coughs> our guy. We got the guy that we feel can make these plays, not the guy that like, he went down to injury, and so he was available. Or he's a journeyman guy. He's a veteran guy. Okay. I, I, I can see that. Now, you have to also think, know that, that listen, our draft picks aren't, aren't unlimited. Yeah. Oh, and these the year previous and this year, I think there was a, uh, a, a focus, especially early on, on offensive players. You know, yeah. they picked up defense a little bit later on. But if we're trying to if we're trying to to build now, are we going to be able to build and with within the first three rounds of of this draft, are we going to be able to build build with pieces that that we can put, let's say, our our elite elite type players on defense? If right. we can feel that need on defense, or are we going to feel that need with our, with the center? If we can get a center, if we can get a center that can service us and we can put elite pieces around us yeah. and see how this center works out for us this year. And then the following year, you know, Hey, if it doesn't work out, then we go, we can get an elite type center. You know, there's, there's gotta be some sort of give and take and, and figure out, okay, if we don't get that center in the second round, but we can get the three technique we're looking for, let's take the three technique and you know, what I mean, we we get we get this that 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 center in that and free agency. So your your draft your draft plan is more best player available than drafting for need at that point. Then because I I think I think it's both. I I think best player available where the Bears are right now at nine, and we don't know what they're going to do on the day. I think best player available would be somebody on the defensive end. You might get a Dallas Turner that falls at four, a, a Jared Verse, right, where you can address that edge rush position without having to pay $20 million. Or Roma Dunze might be there, right? But there's players on both sides. Mm -hmm. I don't think that that player is the center, right? I don't Correct. think that th that guy nah. is Jackson Powers at nine. Correct. It's not. It's not. So in, in that scenario, <laughs> right, but it is something where – do I think Jackson Powers will have a a, a 10-year career or more where he's a very above-average center in the NFL, a very good center in the NFL, and that's something that the Bears do need for stability on their line? Could I then move back maybe? Like, it, there's some people that say you shouldn't take a center in the first round ever. Like, that's, that's a position you don't take first round. And I'm like, but if it answers your question, do you take him there knowing that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you you always gotta. I mean, you you don't want to because it and it mess. I mean, whatever. You know, I don't I don't really care if it messes up the 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 way that everything is structured in the. Yeah. But um, but it they're not going to take a player before they you have to. Right. You know, what I mean, in the NFL, they're not going to take somebody before they have to, and that's why you have all this this these people throwing out these uh, red herrings all the time on on hey, this is uh, they're really they're really thinking about drafting this guy 
you know, and next thing you know, you get a call like, hey, we'll trade you for this, we'll trade you for that, we'll give you this because, you know, and and you trade back and next thing you know, the Bears draft Mr. Trubisky. You know, it's <laughs> it's just, it, it, it's one of those deals, man. You know, you, you if you do your homework, if you do your homework and, and you come prepared, you'll know. You should know, you put yourself and in, in your organization in a position to win when it comes to the draft. But you do that by doing great in the in the free agency first, you know. So I don't think you you I don't think you you go into free agency like okay I'm gonna go into free agency, but I understand that I'm gonna draft this guy, so I don't need no go into free agency and see what you have, what you can get in free agency, and then after you've done that, now all right, now how does this reshape our my this red thumbtack in this line? Let's take this one out. All right, let's, we've got a whole wall now, and let's readjust this wall to get ready for the draft. We got to get the digital walls. Like, we need the, the red thumbtack. Like, you're not wrong. I feel like people are still using that method out there in the world. But how have we not come up with the Tony Stark wall where it's just like, yep, here, here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the voice with the, the voiceover and everything. Or or is uh is, is Ryan Poles in there with the Apple Pro glasses? Is he doing that and like everybody in the building's got him? And so there's just a bunch of dudes in the draft room doing this. <laughs> yep. <laughs> hey man, you gotta be careful with that. You can't walk around Chicago with those things on, man. You might be throwing up gang signs on accident. You don't even know it. You just, you gotta be careful with those things out here, man. Uh well let me let me ask you this, Lance, pertaining to the draft. We do have our segment sponsored by Toyota. The Road to the Draft brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places where now, Lance, you're on the clock. Ooh, my favorite part where we get to promote Lance Briggs. He gets a nice corner office. He's got an orange. Would you go orange uh, suit jacket or would you go blue? I've seen some people do the orange and it scares me every time. Blue. You going blue? You going blue? That's a good call. Orange tie, orange tie with the blue suit jacket, or no, no orange, or a little maybe a little orange flower. Uh, there will be a little little hints of orange in there. Hints of orange. The hints of orange is acceptable. I've seen people go full orange. It's scary. Orange is not a suit color guy. Let it go. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's it's more of a a linen shorts outdoor uh, uh, swim trunks. Yeah, you know for some. Yeah. Euro cut, uh, you know, the 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 speedo. No, I was gonna say to some of our people who are a little more fit, you know, they like the, they like the speedo, they like the euro cut. You why know? why do they always go bright speedo? That is a that is a valid question. I like it's like you're trying to bring our attention to the speedo, and I don't like that either. Listen, I, you know, there there are plenty of things that we've adopted that are euro style. <laughs> the speedo goes too far. You, you're not you're not a speedo guy, Lance. No, no, no. Speedo goes to, all right. Were you ever? Have you tried a speedo? Speedo, you know, um, I think of uh, meeting to beat the parents. And yeah. All that gum, he's just chewing like. <laughs> that's my only option. <laughs> have you ever tried the speedo? Have you? Were you like this? Is it for me? Like, have you? Were you a speedo guy at any point? I tried a speedo like, like outfit when I was in high school, and they were trying to get me to to uh, join the the wrestling team. Uh-huh. And I went for uh, um, maybe two practices and then I asked, you know, I asked the coach, I'm like, hey, do I have to wear this this onesie? And he said, yes, for games. And I said, well, thanks a lot, coach. I will not be joining. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I, dog, you had me nervous. I was like, the coach had y'all wrestling in Speedos? Like, I think I think that's a crime, dog. I don't, that's not the uniform. But nah, this but, is uh, the singlets. <laughs> the, the, the uni, the 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 um, the onesie, yes. Yep. Okay. All right. Had me nervous there, Lance. I thought we were gonna have to do an investigation here. But uh, <laughs> our question for our uh, road to the draft brought to you by Toyota, Lance, with you as the GM. If you were going to target the defensive line in this draft, what are your top three schools? Ooh. Top three schools? Yeah, I'm not talking players. I'm talking schools. <clears throat> okay. Uh, well, I mean, shoot, you got to start at the top teams that went to the uh, the national played national championship. So you you, you got to throw Michigan in there. Michigan's a dog. Michigan in there. Uh, shoot, um, you got to have an SEC team. 
You know, if you're talking, if you're talking the interior defensive tackles, I'm looking at a three technique. You know, you you've got Georgia, you got your Alabama's, um, Ole Miss. You know, <clears throat> uh, who's number one out of those three right now? Who you looking at? Number one, Georgia, Alabama, Ole Miss. Who's who's the who's the the top dog in that? There's some I, dogs out of all of them. I know this one. I you want to say Georgia? You want to say Georgia? But I I don't think that they're their three technique is one of the the top five right now, but you, you can't, you always gotta, you always gotta rock with Georgia. You know, Georgia's okay. going to put defensive players out there. Um, and if you don't, if you don't hit this year, you'll definitely hit the following year. You're going to hit one of those two, two years. So uh, Georgia's got to be in that conversation. So you got Michigan, you got Georgia. Mm-hmm. Whew. Uh, this year, you can say, shoot, Florida State or Miami. Ooh. Florida State or Miami. I, I honestly think that Miami has a three technique that's in that that top five, that top five category. Ooh. Uh, uh, Florida State has a defensive end, Jared Verse, you know, that's in that that top five category. So um, you know, all of these guys, shoot, Alabama's got uh, Dallas Turner. Oh. You know, so it, there's there's plenty of guys there, and it just really depends on uh, what you can get um, and uh, what your draft will allow you to have. So if you can get one of those guys, um, hopefully, you know, um, later in the first round or that nine pick and then uh, get the, the offensive tackle and be able to get both of those guys, that makes us very strong in the interior. We're strong in the interior. We're going to be dominant from our skill. Yeah, and hey, hey, listen, it, it makes it a lot easier when you got time to throw to the guys that are running deep down yep. the field. So you got you got Michigan, you got you got Georgia. Who'd you end up? Florida State. You rocking Florida State on that, or are you going Miami? I'm gonna I'm gonna say <laughs> ah, that's tough. I'm gonna be it's tough because I know that I know there's a three technique right there in Miami, but it's but Florida State, you know, over the last however many years, have yeah. really dominant defensive guys so you know on the strength of that i'm gonna go with florida state yeah go with florida state but uh those are probably the three teams right now off the top of my head you know with now <clears throat> that i that i'm gonna put out there absolute dogs at all of those schools <laughs> it is it is some monsters out there that's been your road to the draft brought to you by toyota let's go places who's been your favorite college player since you've stopped playing to watch oh man uh, like, like like one of those dogs where you were like, hey, listen, it's about to be a problem when he gets to the next level. And you saw it the second he was on the field. Okay. This is a good question. This is a good one. I'm going to go with Noah Fafita and Titora, Titoria, Tito, McMillan. I'm going to say T-Mac. Say T-Mac. I know I didn't say his name right. <laughs> what was it about that game that stood out to you? Uh, You know, it's um, you know just watching his, you know Fafita's his ice in his veins as a quarterback at, Air, at the University of Arizona. Uh, him and uh, T Mac played with each other in high school. You know at Servite. Matter of fact, uh, the top interior D lineman for in Michigan. You know uh, number fifty five, the youngster. He's they all played together in high school. Mm, okay. Uh, you know it's a heck of a connection there. You know and. Um, um, and you can see why their their squad in high school was so successful, you know. State but, championships. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, these guys were competing. These guys and and um, and watching them play, you know, they always find ways. Guys got you know, T Mac's got sticky hands. Um, he's six four. He's a tall receiver. Can move. He's uh, great after the catch. And Fafita is he's just cool as Joe Montana in the in the pocket. You know, and so for us, for us uh, Wildcats, you know, it, it's been a while since we've had a 10 plus a 10 win season, you know. So when you have players that lead you to 10 win seasons that you take notice and um, and hopefully we continue to trend in that direction. But uh, with leaders like them heading Arizona, I like our chances. Hey, you, you you got some dogs out there, man. They, they're getting a little sneaky out there now. I'm not going to lie. Is it, I, you know, I was watching Colorado a lot this season, so I got to see y'all as well. It was, uh, you know. Oh, it yeah. Was, that was a big win. <laughs> that was a big win for us. You know, we, we, we needed that one. We needed that. It was part of our 10. 
I was, <laughs> I was, whoo. Hey, Dion, you got your work cut out for you, dog. I ain't going to lie. I think Shadur is a dog, but you oh, yeah. got your work cut out for you. Listen, that was, you know, the 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 pack this past uh, this past season was was by far one of the, the the toughest and more more competitive conferences, you know, this past season, and it was fun. Yeah. It was a lot of fun to watch. Um, and you know, obviously, a lot with you see the coaching movements that have happened since Saban left, and you have uh, movement within within the pack. Um, it's 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 fun, man. It's fun. It's entertaining. I'm just hope that that. Um, wherever all the colleges go in this upcoming year, you know, um, they make a lot of noise in all of their conferences. Man, football is going to be so different this year, dog. We got so many people who have been staples, not in it anymore. No more Pete Carroll, no more Bill Belichick, uh, Nick Saban retired. We we just lost Peter King today. Like we lost him. He's a writer. He's still alive. That sounded crazy. Yeah, he's yeah, still yeah. alive, guys. <laughs> but he's retiring from writing yeah. uh, and, and being the voice on NBC and all of that. Like, it's, I can't even, that's been my whole life. I can't even imagine football without these names in it. Like this season is going to be so weird college wise, pro wise, football breakdown wise. Cause it's just like, all right, who's going to be the guy that's going to replace in my mind, who's the greatest of all time at what these, what they do. Peter King has been the voice of football pretty much since John Madden went down to me. Yeah. You got to Okay. You're right. Now. You lose Peter King, all right, who's a legend, and you gain a Tom Brady. That's true. Okay, that's true. On the same year, that how we- much we gonna get from Tom? Though Tom was supposed to be on TV last year, and Tom was like, "Hey, I'm not coming." <laughs> Listen, I'm I've only heard a few things. You know, I don't get to hear everything that Tom says, but I when he speaks, I'm glued. Yes, when he speaks, I'm glued. You know, so if there was a year that you had to, you have to lose a, um, an icon like a Peter King, you, it's bittersweet because you gain an icon like a Tom Brady. We really, I think what's interesting is, right, we really haven't seen in a long time where one of the greatest quarterbacks made this transition. Drew Brees has done it, but, you know, I mean, like there's, there's the GOAT and then there's Drew Brees, right? Drew Brees is an amazing quarterback. But like where the one of the best who dominated the game and everybody looked at him was like, no, he's the best player in the league right now. Like goes to the media, like the mindset that has to it does he and is he taking that mindset with him? Just like, well, now I'm just going to be the best media guy for the rest of my time here, which is that would be like Tom Brady coming in is going to be one of the more entertaining. And because he's still close to the game, I think of like Romo that first year where, like, everything was like, he was calling stuff out, and he was like, oh, he's going to do this. Because he still was in the game, and then as it got further away, it was like, ooh. I wouldn't be surprised if if when Tom's uh, son gets old enough that he might even, he even coach football. Mm. Uh, you, I, wouldn't even, I wouldn't be surprised that he would even do that, you know, it, it, it's because it's connecting, man. It's number one, it's connecting, yeah, and, and you're a – you're you're certainly a a coach that's going to come in that people aren't going to question you. <laughs> you know you're going to get some dad that questions, Lance. You've had some dad look at you and be like, well, Lance, wouldn't you want him to drop back here like this a little bit when you want to? I mean, of, of course, uh, uh, parents probably certainly thinking that stuff, but there's there, there's things that a lot of parents, it's different. It's different. Like, they – Parents have always approached me with with respect, you know, yeah. and, and so and that's fine. And, and 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 for me, it's about the why. So when they ask questions, I explain to them the why, you know. And so that and, and that's the reason why I don't shy away from any of that stuff. Like I really, I want your question. I want you to question me in this sport of football, because when you question me in this sport of football, I will always have the why for you. Yeah, the why. It's not going to be just because this is the way I want it to be done. That's never that, you know. And so. For Tom, Tom, if he decided to coach and any parent had any issue with what's going on, Tom's going to have the why right now. He's going to have the why for you, you know, and whether you can handle it, whether you as a parent who thinks that your son or daughter is the next greatest thing ever, can you handle him, uh, you know, the coach giving you the why? And and part of that why is saying that, you know, maybe your son or your daughter is not that doggone good right now, you know? <laughs> They are in development right now. 
<laughs> hey, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think Tom gonna say they're in development. Tom, I've heard Tom talk to some of these. <laughs> hey, hey, Tom said he had a. I forget I, uh, the person who he was talking about in the story is in the NFL now, but I forget who the story was about. But he, Tom, went back to his college and was like just throwing the ball around. He was throwing it with, um, he was throwing it with Wes. And, like, he thought, <laughs> the guy thought everybody was just in the receiver line going out to catch passes. <laughs> and Tom looked at him and said, get, get out the way. Get out the way. I, I, I don't throw footballs to anybody's. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And so it's just like, I don't think Tom's going to be very reserved. And, and what he's, oh, you, you, you believe that your son's drop back is not good enough, huh? Or is, is good enough right now, huh? Yeah, really? Uh, well, let me tell you this about your son. He's not gonna get out of high school. I hate to tell you this. He's he's destined for a life. Oh, he's gonna crush dreams, huh? Oh yes. Oh, Tom is Tom is going to, and there's gonna be some quarterback that he says it about that's gonna like take it personally and become just purely amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. But you okay, so now if you say you are the you're the school and you were like, oh, we have Tom Brady. But then you 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 have a like a, a a meeting. You're like he's crushing everybody's dreams, <laughs> right? Like, well, how do we handle this? Like, we can't fire him. We don't pay him. You know, <laughs> we're lucky to have him. <laughs> <coughs> We've had three kids come in crying this week. <laughs> We've had four kids go to baseball. <laughs> they, they they said Tom said they couldn't throw. They uh, just started playing baseball. <laughs> Oh, I'm telling you, dog. Tom Brady is not holding back on none of these. Because I guarantee you, you know he talked before, like, Michigan went on a run with the team and stuff. I yeah. guarantee you he walked in them rooms and was like, now don't y'all go out there and disrespect my name out here. Like, wait a minute. Wait, Tom, hold on. I, I did this. I am Michigan. Y'all y'all better get it right. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Oh man, it's 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 wild out here, dog. I mean, we we we're losing Peter King, but like you said, we're gaining Tom Brady, and I think that that is going to be an absolute addition to the sports world. And I can't wait to see what he's going to be as a broadcaster, man. I think, like you said, every time Tom talks, you can't help but stop and listen because you know he's saying something insightful. Um, <laughs> <laughs> listen, and, and I'll tell you one thing. Nobody's gonna go uh, go after Tom Brady like they went after Cam Newton. I will tell you that much. You know how many people it would take <laughs> to pull Tom Brady off of something? It took six for Cam. Listen, um, what's going on out here, dog? Society podcast beefs is getting too real, dog. Yeah, uh, listen, he handled his own. <laughs> hey, hey, yo, handled his own. I can tell you that much. Somebody on Twitter said, "I ain't never seen a reverse jumping where you try to jump somebody." And you end up being the one getting beat up at the end. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's wild, man. That's it wild. was wild because it's at a kid's camp. He's trying to do something for the kids. He invites the trash talk. So y'all going back and forth. And then you take it to a level it doesn't ever need to be taken to. Right. And you got whooped. Like Cam Newton had one dude in the headlock. He was holding one dude by the throat. Right. And like he, he was bowing another guy that was walking like... <laughs> Here's my thing, but, but you know, at the, and at the, at the, but at the same time, exactly what you just said. Like this is a, this is this is for the kids, man. This is for the kids, and 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 you disregarded that. Yeah. Like your your issue was bigger than the kids. Yeah. Now, you made it. You made it about yourself. You know, and your beef that you have with Cam Newton, as opposed to you know, you know. Listen, let me see you at the at the coffee shop or somewhere. If we can handle our stuff like men, but. We're creating, we, like, we're, we're, we're setting a, a horrible example for our community. For yeah, and, and that's that's what killed me. It's like, fam, you don't see this at Drew Brees camps. You don't see this at Tom Brady camps. You don't see this at Peyton Manning camps. Like, Come on, man. Cam is giving something to our community. He's giving a, a spotlight to our kid. This is something that Justin Fields took part in. You have to think about that. Like, this is something where he was not on the map Justin Fields was a good quarterback, but he was not on the map until he went to Cam Newton's camps. Right. That's the kind of platform Cam is bringing yeah. to y'all cities. And because Cam gives y'all the trash talk energy that y'all give him, now we swing it. Mm -hmm. Come on, guys. Yeah. And you got whooped. Don't lose the fight. <laughs> it's true.
don't don't do all that just to be on video losing the fight to one man. Them boys was they were trying. They, were, <laughs> they looked like the uh, the the little the pygmy tribe against the rock that was <laughs> brown on that movie. Blue hitting them swinging around. Them. It's blue. It was like all right. Here's, here's my what thing. Are, you watched Cam Newton take Auburn to a national championship with basically like one offensive lineman that ended up making the NFL. You watched him go to a Super Bowl, pretty much putting that team on his back with Ted Ginn as his best receiver, and you thought three people were going to stop him? Yeah. Well, they shouldn't have thought that. <laughs> hey, 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 they probably thinking it now. They're probably like, why did we, why did we think that? Why, what happened with that? Oh man, it's 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 a why. I, I think society's gotten too comfortable with with the keyboard ways, and then they have to prove whatever they was talking about when you get in person. Because I think about even the KD situation, where over the weekend somebody calls him outside his name, KD confronts him, and now all of a sudden it's, oh man, we didn't mean nothing by that. We didn't mean like, what are you? <laughs> and there's and there's a section of people that literally live in the. Well, he gets paid millions of dollars. He should he should be bigger than that. Yeah. That don't that don't mean nothing. That's a grown man. You calling him outside his name. Like very, very true. I don't know. True, my friend. I don't know. But hey, another edition of the Chicago Bears podcast in the tank for you guys. Appreciate you guys for tuning in and showing love. Uh just know if you uh, see us in public, don't try it. Uh <laughs> appreciate you guys for showing. <laughs> Please don't, man. Listen, this is this this is a different chapter of my life, man. <laughs> hey, hey, but it's nothing to reread the book. Yeah, you know I mean, it's nothing no. to re- listen. I'm about y'all. Listen, I'm, worried, I'm about peace and prosperity, baby. Peace and prosperity. But <laughs> but that right hook is always cocked and loaded now. Pow! <laughs> <laughs> For Lance Briggs, the heavyweight champ, I'm your boy, Beth, the designer. Back at it again. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the page. Leave that five-star view. Y'all know what to do. Y'all stay safe out there, Chicago. Bear down. Peace.